Red lights are on. We're away. Good start from everyone on the front row. Glenn Allen Allen particularly well, I think. But uh, I think Troy Herfus will have the line. Well, he's got the early race lead. Wayne Maxwell and Glenn Allen will be very determined to make sure that Troy can't escape. Matt Walder's up there as well in fourth place. Mike Jones just behind. Yeah, Jamie's gone uh, backwards a little bit there. Mike Jones and uh, Matt Walters just ahead of him on the circuit. Linda McGee right behind him. Then it's Will Davidson, Sean Condon. Crew Halliday's got a fair bit of work to do as they make their way towards the top of the hill. He's back towards the uh, the rear end of the pack there on board bike number six. But after yesterday, Trev, I'd say he's probably just going to take the first lap relatively easy and uh, settle into the race. One man that's not taking it very easy at all is Troy Herfos there. He uh, was into that, uh, it carried a lot more uh, speed into that corner, but Glenn Allen was very, very late on the brakes and made a lot of it up. But I uh, thought he was going to run a little bit wide there in Bell Helmets Fushu, but Glenn kept it together. Well, Glenn, of course, really came on song at Queensland Raceway. It was his first uh, real huge step forward on the YZF R1M. Yeah, New they, rider. Yeah, they changed the uh, changed the rear shock setting and uh, all of a sudden Glenn Allison was right on the pace. He was looking very racy in the third race yesterday yes, afternoon definitely. as well. Took the lead and, and took out a, uh, a very handy lead in only half a lap. Then, unfortunately, there was the uh, the red flag stoppage, which uh, put paid to that. But uh, look at him now as he's right on the ducktail of Troy Herfoss as they make their way up the Ipone Hill. Trevin towards the uh, the top end of the circuit here. The camera doesn't actually show how much of a climb it is up there on that hill. Yeah. And having ridden on a mountain bike, it looks uh, it's a whole lot harder on a mountain bike than what it is on a motorcycle as well. As they just go through Kawasaki Corner, now Berwick Leathers downhill. So quite a, quite a tricky little entry to this one too. A lot of riders run off here or run wide here. Yeah, we've seen uh, some different lines employed there yesterday. A lot of riders getting uh, well, very out of shape up in the there. Inside of Lyndon McGee. Oh, there's not a lot of room to go through there. It's interesting to see the difference between uh, see Allen very physical on that uh, R1, and it doesn't look to be riding the bumps quite as smoothly as what uh, Herfoss's uh, Fireblade SP is around here. And there are a few bumps around here. I was talking to Troy this morning. I said, "Jizzy, really, it really sort of the Fireblade's rearing up on you quite a lot, still wheeling quite a lot." And he said, uh, "He said actually." sort of prefer to let the front sort of float off the air so to help ride that way I don't have to deal with the bumps. I was actually what, looking at the uh, the bikes when I came in from the third race yesterday and all of them are running the bikes at the maximum oil oh. base that they possibly can due to the uh, the nature of this circuit. Mike Jones, it's just uh, Mike Jones and Jamie Stover have got ahead of Matt Walters there as they make their way up towards the uh, the top of the Kawasaki uh, corner. Troy Herfoss just, uh, just got a little bit un uh, untidy there through uh, Ipone Turn 3 that uh, lap before he looked absolutely super smooth uh, the whole race there but uh, the Fireblade did protest on him a little bit there so he's definitely pushing not much left in the bag. Well 58-4 the fastest lap of the race from uh, Troy Herfoss on that first uh, well flying lap is uh, that's a pretty impressive start. Jamie Stofer up the inside of Mike Jones to take fourth position and pulls it off. Mike's Stands it up a little bit. He does have the inside line. We'll get the power down. Yeah, Jamie just ran a fraction wide on the exit of the corner, and uh, Jones will use the power of that Kawasaki to drive out of the corner. But Jamie will be very good on the brakes as they come down now towards the uh, the second corner on the circuit. This is Vez return two. And this is where they start the long drive up the hill. As we said, the camera doesn't really show you what an uphill climb that is up to uh, up towards Ipone there. And that's where our race leaders are at the moment. Herfoss, Allerton and Maxwell making their way through. So we've got two three-bike battles to sort out the top six positions with a little bit of a gap in between two of them of about uh, two seconds, Trev. And, of course, we still have uh, around 18 kilometres to go in this race distance, so anything can happen from here. But... Uh, See Wayne Maxwell looming large there in third place, though. He's uh, not far at all behind uh, Glenn Allerton and Troy Herfoss, so uh, I know he'll definitely be in the battle right to the flag. Well, if, if anything, Troy Herfoss is probably hoping that Glenn Allerton finishes in second place and takes yeah. some points off his... Uh, Jamie up the inside of Jones again. Biggest championship rival. Jamie's going to try to get at the same corner. Will he... No, he doesn't run wide this time. Takes a much tighter line. Jamie Stofer goes so close to that black uh, bit of uh, well, protector or whatever on the tyre wall. Yeah. Every lap he was almost clipping the shoulder of his Alpine Star Leathers as he went past. Matty Walters is about to attack Mike Jones also. In the battle for Pro-Am Championship points as well between uh, Jones and Matt Walters. Jones currently leads the Pro-Am class but Matt Walters is putting in some good rides of late. Crew Halliday is also starting to uh, close in from behind. On the last lap Crew Halliday set his fastest lap of the race and he was about uh, two tenths of a second faster than Walters and four tenths of a second faster than Mad Mike Jones. So Crew should be able to still take some good points here today even uh, with carrying those injuries. See Jane Mike's trying to hang with Jamie there. Jamie Oh, it's pumping a little bit yeah. on the back of that ZX-10 there. A fair bit of pogo action there from uh, Mike Jones on board the Cube Racing Machine. Of 
course, the uh, the team leader, Ben Henry, not here this weekend because his uh, girlfriend's having a baby. So uh, Glen Allen a little bit deep there into uh, Race Tech Turn 8 that time around. Lost, lost a little yeah, bit yeah. of ground to Troy Herfoss there. So uh, Herfoss now enjoys a nine-tenths of a second lead. And uh, Wayne Maxwell is half a second behind Glen Allen. So Herfoss has escaped with that 58.06. Well, we're about to uh, half race distance now. Pretty much when they get to the top of this hill, Trev, that'll be half race distance. As uh, Herfoss leads up through the Ipone corners and up to the top of the hill now. Maxwell, he'll be strong in the second half of the race. He doesn't uh, try and push too hard early on the race. Just wants to stay well and truly in contention. He's been a bit of a quiet achiever this year. I mean, it's, it's really hard to put Wayne Maxwell and quiet as those sort of two words linked together. Because Oh, very oh, wide, oh, very Maxwell. Wide. He was lucky to keep the bike on track then. He got to the top, the bottom of the hill. You said it before, Trevor. It's a very tricky corner. We see a lot of riders run wide. Old Troy getting a bit of leg dangle now. Let's see if he can go 58-0 last think, time around. Uh, as he's Troy Herfoss is looking very serious now. He's, oh, look, a beautiful bit of attitude drift from the Fireblade there out of Ipoon Turn 8. I think the glorious. Uh, red mist visor has been well and truly engaged on uh, the front of his uh, very brightly coloured bell helmet as they come down now to uh, Vesra Turn 2 on the seventh lap of this 12-lap uh, journey. So Herfoss now has 1.2 seconds as uh, five laps to run. Jamie Six Stouffer run, said his fastest lap of the race on the last lap, as did Mad Mike Jones. I think they may have got the message that Crew Halliday's closing in very quickly from behind. And Matt Walters was right on the back of uh, Jamie and Mike Jones there, but he's lost some ground on that last lap. So... Uh, Matty Walters, uh, but Sean Condon is in seventh place, struggling with an injury, but still uh, managed to sneak past Lyndon McGee on that lap to move up to seventh place. Well, that's the battle of the wounded riders, isn't it? Uh, Lyndon mm. McGee and, uh, and, and Sean Crew Condon. in there as well. So our three wounded warriors are uh, yeah, in that battle for seventh position. Will Davidson putting in another great ride on board his privateer uh, Yamaha R1, the only B grader in this field. So Herfoss has got to control this race from the front now and uh, should be getting some uh, some lap boards from, uh, to show that distance. So he uh, only pushes as hard as he needs to, so he doesn't chew that tyre up too much. Well, you mentioned lap boards, and there all of a sudden you see uh, Glenn Allison's lap board right getting the, uh, the messes there from uh, from Chucker, his mechanic. That he had half a second on uh, on Wayne Maxwell, but uh, that gap now last time across the stripe was up to seven tenths of a second that Allen had, had over Maxwell, but uh, that doesn't look quite right on the track there. I think Maxwell was uh, perhaps gathered more ground back home when he threw Honda turn one and Vez return two so they head up uh, Ipern turn three and negotiate Kawasaki corner now. Well we've spoken about the championship battle between uh, Troy Herfoss and Wayne Maxwell but there's also the inner Yamaha team battle between uh, guys that have got multiple Australian championships to their name in Wayne Maxwell and Glenn Allenton. They both want to be the top player in that team and uh, they're at the moment fighting it out for second and third position on track and Glenn Allenton will like nothing more than taking a few points back from uh, the lead of uh, Wayne Maxwell in this battle for the top three in the championship. And of course, Crew been right up there at the top of that uh, Yamaha pile as well earlier on in the uh, season, but a uh, mistake at Queensland and that crash yesterday is, um, yeah, his mid part of the season has, uh, has taken a little bit of a downturn, unfortunately. And all three of them have taken a round victory and uh, race victories in the season yep. so far. Oh, Allerton out of the seat as they drive up towards the Ipone corners at the top of the hill now. Maxwell's you can see the attitude from uh, the back end of Glen Allerton's machine. And that's given Maxwell a sniff, so uh, well, not that he needed one, but uh, that'll uh, really be filling him, filling him with confidence that he should be able to uh, perhaps steal that second position from Glen Allerton before the race. Oh, nice bit of attitude through there from Glen Allerton. Nice, nice, beautiful slide through uh, Berwick Leathers downhill. Well, they're masters of bike control, these guys, aren't they? And it's, it's not only motorcycles, Trevor, we've mentioned before, push bikes, mountain bikes, it doesn't matter. They just seem to have the uh, the skill to be able to put the bike into positions that right. mere mortals don't. Troy Herfoss gives us a, an ample demonstration of his ability, as does Glen Allerton. And Wayne Maxwell actually starting to get the bike a little bit sideways. That's not something that we usually associate with Wayne Maxwell's riding. No, but, uh, now it's getting down to the business end of this race, and... Uh, Glenn did manage to pull a, a bike length or two back on him just before there, so Will Wayne will be desperate to really make sure that that, uh, that doesn't happen. He went very strong into uh, Honda Turn 1 and, and Vezra Turn 2, though. He seems to uh, gather a lot more uh, ground back on Glenn Allerton there, but then Glenn through the uh, through the second half, all very patters across the bumps there, the front of the, uh, front of the YZFR1M of Maxwell's there. There was literally two tenths of a second between Herfoss, Allerton and Maxwell in their lap times on that last lap. Still fastest lap of the race for... Uh, Troy Herfoss, that 58.069. It's just off the lap, the, uh, lap record, 57 flat, I think, isn't it? Quite curious, though, that uh, Glen Allen and Maxwell are back into the 58.8s when they've both done 58.2s and 58.1s. Um, tire wear hasn't really been an issue for uh, for the guys here this weekend, so uh, I wouldn't imagine it's uh, it's tire wear that slowed them. So um, 
I would imagine, I would have thought they would have been going a little bit faster than uh, than that in this latter stage of the race. Oh, Matty Walters, great demonstration of a bit of sideways action there. And I just checked the lap record. It is a 58.025 held by Troy Herfoss. So he's only four one hundredths of a second off the lap record with that fastest lap of this race now. As uh, we and complete course, 10 laps, so we've got two laps to go. And of course, three three of them were under that in qualifying, of course, though, yep. on, uh, on that uh, solo uh, Friday afternoon qualifying session. So uh, the three guys in the 57.7. Wayne Maxwell was the fastest with a 57.7, I believe, which was uh, the fastest lap ever around Wakefield Park by a motorcycle. Yeah, and I think he'd also uh, shocked a few people that everyone was saying that this was Honda territory and the Yamaha wouldn't be as good here. And Maxwell came out in that Friday afternoon session and showed everyone that he was going to be a contender this weekend as Jamie Stouffer and Mad Mike Jones get involved in a little bit of uh, close battle there at the bottom of the, uh, the fish hook. So they make their way round through Dunlop and out onto the uh, the back straight where there's that good crowd of spectators. You can see all the cars there uh, taking in this great racing action. Matty Walters has just dropped off a fraction. Yeah, he'd be disappointed the back of that, that battle. He'd be disappointed to have dropped off the back of that battle. He's two seconds behind Mike Jones there. Troy Herfoss has just got the last lap board as they set off now on the last 2.2 kilometres tour of the Wakefield Park circuit. Herfoss leads by oh, two seconds wow. over Allerton. They're beautiful who's, uh, slides from Allerton. He'll be off Allerton to the laundry there, after this one. I'll tell you what, Trev, oh. after, uh, after that effort, Wayne Maxwell has got a little bit of work to do though he's got half a second he needs to try and make up through this x section of the circuit to try and mount a challenge on his teammate at the final corner for that second place and the very important 22 championship points that go with it and but Glenn, herfoss on track for 25 and glenn allen clearly displayed his determination not to allow wayne maxwell any chance sniff of that second place there with that uh, massive slide up that uh, did chains up it was beautiful he is literally torching that rear tire now herfoss has a look over his shoulder he knows that there's no one very close to him allerton has i think just got enough on maxwell they'll drive to the flag it should be herfoss that will take victory and a very important 25 championship points that go with it head underneath the screen cheers uh, the crowd as he comes past the line what a great ride from the top three. And Jamie Stouffer will come home in a very important fourth position, followed by Mad Mike Jones and Matty Walters in sixth. I think that's probably the widest scope over the top um, three, over the top three or four finishes um, that we've had this season. Yeah, certainly there's been some uh, extremely close racing. Speaking of close racing, look at the battle between the Wounded Warriors, Sean Condon and Lyndon McGee. There was literally nothing uh, between Troy Herfoss takes the win and 25 championship points from Glenn Allerton and Wayne Maxwell. Now we said about uh, some big smiles down there before. I reckon the local man, Troy Herfoss, will have a big smile on his face when he comes down to talk to Lance very, very soon. Yeah, we'll another him. And he's now ready to uh, talk to Lance, our race winner, Troy Herfoss from Team Honda Racing. Well, Troy Herfoss, congratulations. A great way to reward the good crowd that's come out here today. Yeah, so far we're, we're four down, two to go. So I don't want to get too excited because it's, um, it's a great day and it's good condition. So these guys are going to are going to pick up on what we're doing. I've been lucky enough this weekend to be sort of a bit cagey and they haven't sort of seen what, what we've got. But um, obviously that's our race pace there. But I felt really good. I I went out um, at a reasonably good pace and and um, and then I once I backed it off to something quite comfortable. We still grew the gap, so um, very promising, and um, just just got to go go our own way and and make sure the Honda keeps working as po good as possible. After yesterday's atrocious conditions, how is the track handling it today? Oh, it's amazing. It feels like you're a Phillip Island or something compared to yesterday, but um, yeah, conditions are great, perfect, and um, and uh, yeah, we're looking forward to some good racing. Good on you, mate. Thanks, Lance. Second place, because Glenn Allerton. Congratulations, Team Yamaha doing a fantastic job out there. Bit of a struggle though early on. He, he got a bit of a, a bolter on you. Yeah, look, he's um, obviously the man at the moment around here. So to try and stay with him is just a, a task in itself. But you know, it's it's racing and the conditions we see now. We haven't seen all weekend, but I learned a lot in that race. So I can go back and try and make a couple of adjustments to try and give Troy a run here, Savo, because don't want him to have it all his own way. Well, you and the Yamaha seem to be moulding better and better and, and getting closer and closer together as the races go on. Yeah, for sure. The, you know, um, the feeling I got with the bike's great. Um, I just need to be able to work on a few areas where Troy's clearly faster than me. And, um, you know, it's just one spot in particular. I know exactly what we've got to do. Uh, I've just got to figure out the way to make the bike do what I want it to do and then uh, and keep it on two wheels and then we'll be in the race. Well, we'll let you go back and get that job done. Thanks. There you go. And third place, the defending champion himself, Wayne Maxwell, also Yamaha mounted. Wayne, uh, conditions out there are a little bit better today, but the boys in front of you just sort of got that bolt early on. Yeah, look, they got me at the start there, and yeah, I was just too slow on the get-go. 
pretty standard in my riding style and um, yeah, you can't give riders like uh, Glenn and Troy a head start because especially around a place like this, it's hard to make up the time. Is there anything you need to change on the Yamaha or is it a matter of getting that better start next time out? Oh yeah, we can always improve, it's obvious, you know, Troy did that pretty easy then and uh, we're not stupid to think that we pushed him any other way and um, yeah, we'll just have to see what we can do and yeah, it's, we're just not good enough at the moment. Good luck mate. Thank you. Thank you very much mate. Well, some clear honesty from Ray Maxwell there, just saying uh, clearly not good enough here today to um, to take it to Troy Herfoss, and uh, I think Troy showed yesterday that he is the man in, in the mixed conditions. Things were much, much closer, but um, that's the easiest win of the series so far. It is, and uh, I think the telling thing was that Wayne Maxwell actually said that we're not stupid enough to think that we actually pushed him, because I think uh, Troy may have had a little bit up his sleeve there, Trev, yeah. and uh, as he said, he backed it off mid-race, still managed to circulate around in pretty comfortable 59 mids, to uh, high 59s. That's right, and Glenn, Glenn and uh, Wayne had drifted back to 58.8s and they were trying. You can see they, they were really trying and uh, and Troy just backed it off because he couldn't really, but uh, I think he could have gone yeah, a fair bit faster than that if he needed to. Oh, and her foster's... Uh...